Recent data points to a drop in current account deficit for the October-December quarter. It has shrunk to a four-year low of $4.1 billion or nearly 1% of the GDP, 0.9% really. It's had a positive effect on the currency as well. Anupriya Nair is standing by with a quick check on the money markets. We also have K. Hariharo, First Strand Bank, joining us uh, to give us a perspective. Anu, you go first. How is it looking? It's looking very good, Harsha. Positive is sort of an understatement we've seen the currency. It's been moving from strength to strength, but today's definitely a day where you give uh, Dr. Rajan as well, the Ministry of Finance, a little pat on the back, given the fact that we've seen a four-year low CAD coming in. What's really helped this? Uh, the gold imports coming down, as well as the large FCNR inflow that we saw, the FDI inflows. So that's really helping uh, the CAD number fall to a four-year low. Uh, the strong debt flows that we've seen, Harsha, we've been talking about that, has also helped uh, stabilize the rupee and push it towards back to the 60 mark as well. A uh, lot of big bets across the board when it comes to FIs betting on the currency now. We've heard from Goldman Sachs who's saying they now prefer this currency over most other EM currencies, be it Brazil, South Africa and Turkey. Remember that the rupee is the best performing EM currencies over six months. Uh, we also spoke to Barclays, HSBC, Morgan Stanley. All of them also say that at this point, Currency-wise, at least rupee looking the most stable. They don't hold the same view in the equity markets for India, but the currency market's looking a lot stable. Uh, remember, the currency is about 11% higher than it, what it was in the low that it hit in August, but it's still 15% off its 52-week its, uh, high of 58.30. We spoke to Gautam Shah this morning, who said it could see technically in a 12-month reach, he's probably expecting the rupee to appreciate back to that 57 mark. But the $4 billion that's come into India and the debt flows, definitely helping the currency. Hold the thought, Anu. K. Hari Haro, first try now joins in on this conversation. Hari, uh, great having you on the show as always. What do you make of this current account deficit number and specifically uh, the kind of rub off that you're seeing in the currency? Uh, when we look at the current account deficit, clearly the trade numbers were already there in the public domain. So when you look at the other, the other inflows that come in, which is the software and the remittances, and clearly while the market was expecting something like 1.2% of the GDP at 0.9, it's really surprised the market. And the quality of the CAD also has turned out to be very good. So it's not just by compressing the, the gold imports that it's happened, uh, because that can always keep open the fear that when the gold imports restart, then you'll go back and uh, you know fall into the old trap. But qualitatively, the exports seem to be up, the FDI seems to be up, the FI numbers are there, the inward remittances are good. So it's a very, very positive kind of number. And, and clearly, we're now going to print probably the full year CAD at 40 or $42 billion, which is going to be half or less than half of what we had the last year. So very sustainable number. So the breach of 6150 clearly was there on the cards and it's breached. Right. Uh, but is it going to be a, a one-way street onto the below 60 levels? I'm not too sure. Right. Uh, because remember, uh, if you look at the, again the numbers that came out yesterday, 30 plus billion dollars came in on account of the inward remittances. Uh, a large part of it may probably go out in October, November uh, this year. So there will be a lot of buying happening by the oil companies and by the other importers. So I would say a very slow and steady first test of 61 before it goes on with a nervous watch on the developments in China. Sure. You know, Hari, I, I have two points to make. One, uh, I was talking to Titan a couple of days ago and many people believe that the time has come to sort of remove the curbs on gold imports, number one. The second uh, is that some people believe that, you know, this, this uh, positive news on the current account is temporary in nature. So you're going to have this problem resurface and you're going to see the currency coming under pressure once again. What do you think of both these things? Okay, when I look at the components, the export growth that seems to be happening about 13%, 12%, why on why? Very, very sustainable because of the fact that the West is looking good and the Eurozone is looking good and the rupee actually has given up most of the fall and actually it's a very steady rupee which is facing the export market. So that will sustain. On the import side, if you believe that the PMI data which came out on the services and the manufacturing is a lead indicator and India starts actually growing, then you could see import pickup on the heavy equipment side and the manufacturing side and that can cause a little bit of a dent on the numbers. Uh, thirdly, the FI numbers, if you look at the quality of it, the bulk of it seems to have come into the debt markets. And last April, May, we saw that the money can come into the debt market, but if uh, they achieve their objective in terms of yield, they can actually walk off. So there's a little bit of vulnerability on account of the debt flows. Also remember the table and the commercial portfolio, uh, commercial paper, uh, you know, ceilings which are there in the market are breached. So the money that's now going to come into the debt market has to come up in the longs. Uh, there is enough reason for it to come in because uh, WPI is down, CPI is down, GDP is slowing down. So there is a case for an interest rate cut 
and and uh, hundred percent interest rate pause. So money will come in, but I would watch out for the what's happening on the FI flows. Is too much discounted already in the equity markets, and is there going to be a little bit of steadying happening on uh, on the debt market flows? Sure. Uh, but having said all of that, I think the rupee is in a happy space. I think uh, from that sixty one sixty three, we can probably move it down to sixty half, sixty two half as a range. A little bit on the left uh, trending kind of thing. Hari, I want to come in on that, on the yield path that you just talked about. Uh, the T-bill uh, quota almost completely finished of $5.5 billion. So most of the money coming in sort of uh, hedging against what's going to happen on the elections. What is your yield range looking like given the fact that Bloomberg's also uh, got from sources that 60% of the borrowing for next year is going to happen in the first half? The market is used to that, uh, but the yields have been edging lower. But do you think that's uh, too optimistic right now given the fact that uh, nobody really knows where rates might be headed? I think uh, if you look at the first the number, the 60% or 65%, I think that's something that the market traditionally has been used to, so by itself not a surprise. Mm. Secondly, the bulk of the buying in, in actual rupee terms is actually by banks and insurance companies and mutual funds. Mm. Uh, with the FI numbers, when you talk of something like 2 billion a month, in, in rupee terms, it's, it's, uh, it's just about 15,000 crores. Now, 15,000 crores is the kind of number with the FIs are buying in a month, which the market buys in a week uh, locally. Uh, so, uh, by itself, the FI appetite for the T-bill market may not really, uh, you know, take the sheen off the debt market. Yeah, you saw the T-bill yields going up yesterday, so they are comfortably about 9%. So, uh, in terms of buying, I think their, their, their lack of presence would actually keep the yield a little bit up. Going forward into next year, uh, you know, the factor that I would really look for is this month is a bit of a, it gives you a feel-good situation because a lot of term repos that have happened in the marketplace. What the markets will want to know is will these term repos be a regular feature of the marketplace? Mm -hmm. Will they continue next year? If so, mm -hmm. I think we are in a slightly more comfortable space. If they kind of come off and you have a large supply of uh, stocks coming in at, at roughly about, say, 60,000 crores, uh, gross inflow into the market per month, right. I think then the absorption capacity could be fairly limited and right. that could keep the yields in a very sticky place, not necessarily with the upward tilt, but in a sticky space. If you look at the emerging basket currencies right now, um, take the, the South African rand, uh, take the T Turkish lira for all that's happened there and the Indian rupee, mm -hmm. what would you place your bets on? I would clearly uh, change the word fragile five and remove India out of it because we seem to be the only country out there which has created a magic of converting a 6.9% uh, uh, current account deficit last year, sure. same time, to 0.9%. So we, we probably, among the entire space, are the only guys who manage the twin deficit uh, comfortably and sustainably. So I think uh, the other countries continue to be because they have not come up with the kind of restrictions or they don't have the flexibility to stop one flow or the other right. to manage the numbers. So I would say that there's a bit of decoupling happening, not complete, but de a little bit. Uh, and we are a bit more uh, kind of insulated. Where we'll be more vulnerable is the two factors, which is uh, the Fed fund, the taper. Uh, it's almost on an auto mode. So what will happen as we go along into both the elections and as, as the equity market attracts lesser and lesser flows? And it's early days, but if uh, what we hear from the market is the Chinese authorities a, are a bit uncomfortable with the kind of arbitrage or the carry trade that's happening, and they could look to weaken the currency, mm. and the PMI out there is uh, also not looking great. Now, that could cast a bigger shadow for rupee and the other emerging markets than necessarily what's happening in the uh, uh, South African or the Brazil or those kind of countries.